Well, welcome to ISER. Um, this noon time for our seminar, we have Phil Grossman. Phil is here this semester as the Rasmussen Chair. Uh, Phil's background is in uh, experimental economics. Uh, he's a faculty member at Monash University. Uh, was in the past back in Minnesota, as I was in the Minsky system. Both of us have escaped that. Uh, although, although Phil has a much stronger opinion about weather up there, I know. Than uh, yeah, I, I escaped the weather. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a real pleasure to have uh, Phil over here today uh, giving a talk about It Pays to Be a Man, Rewards for Leaders in the Coordination Game. So, Phil. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you all for turning out. And thank you for having me. Um, so, the title is It Pays to Be a Man. Uh, uh, hopefully, it's a nice, sexy title to attract interest of journals. Um, <laughs> this is co-authored with a couple of people, some of you have already met, uh, who've been here in the last couple of months. Catherine Eckel, uh, a long-running co-author of mine uh, for many years uh, since I started doing experimental. Uh, Monica Mai, who is a student of Catherine's that we hired at St. Cloud State when I was there. Uh, she and I have started doing experiments and then Wee San is a uh, recent graduate of Texas A&M and a student of Catherine. So, um, all right, so just to motivate the paper a little bit, um, there has been over the past uh, decades great strides made by women in the labor market. Uh, so now they uh, uh, account for approximately 50% of the people in the labor market. Uh, they've made great strides academically. The majority of the uh, undergraduate degrees are now uh, awarded to women, and approximately 50% of the postgraduate degrees, PhDs, law degrees, medical, and MBA degrees are going to women. Right. Um, changes over this past decade were called by uh, Claudia Golden a quiet revolution. Right. So uh, on one hand, uh, women have have made great, straight, uh, great strides. On the other hand, they're still underrepresented in leadership roles. So in government, they represent uh, less than 30% of members in Congress and the EU Parliament. Uh, our EU Parliaments um, at, in business, they account for uh, only about 4% of CEOs and only about 20% of board seats. And the evidence suggests that women who do make it to these upper echelons in the corporate world tend not to be promoted even further or rewarded uh, at the same rate as men. Right. So what uh, our paper is trying to look at is some of, the, you know, at least some of the reasons or one of the reasons why this might be so. Now, one reason might be perception. And here the idea is that women are just not perceived as very effective leaders. Uh, and there's been a, a work on this done by uh, Egley and others over the years. Um, they found that, especially in like male-oriented settings, women are just not uh, viewed uh, as effective leaders. So uh, in maybe like an automobile company, a woman as a leader is just not going to get the respect cosmetic industry, maybe a bit more so. Right. There's also evidence that uh, men tend to exert more influence in groups, that they, uh, that their contributions receive more attention. Uh, it's often said that, you know, the woman will uh, raise her hand, make a, a, a suggestion, it's ignored, and then five minutes later the man raises his hand, makes a suggestion, and everyone says, wonderful suggestion, totally ignoring the fact that a few minutes uh, before it was made by a woman. All right, so uh, men's contributions receive more attention, and men tend to resist the influence of women. Um, uh, so women, when they do try to exert influence, just tend to be ignored. All right. There's other evidence that competence in women uh, does not translate into influence. So. The idea that uh, if your car breaks down, you might take the advice of the male doctor, ignoring the advice of the female auto mechanic. Um, uh, so they just, uh, whatever skills they might have are undervalued. Uh, another reason for this is 
leadership can be a high status position. Uh, and in society, women tend to have less status than men. So if a woman is placed in a leadership role, there's this, this uh, incongru incongruity, incongruity, I can't spit that word out for whatever reason. There's um, uh, mismatch, 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 boy, <laughs> want to roll today, <laughs> mismatch of uh, uh, status and uh, gender, and uh, women tend to be uh, viewed as not legitimate leaders. Their suggestions are ignored, their advice is ignored, um, and they just don't get the respect that they should as the leader. So, and then lastly, he says, even in situations where there's no inherent difference among the leaders by design, this, so this is an experimental type of situation, you may get differences in outcomes. Uh, uh, the one studied by me, it's listed there, myself and Mana, and uh, a master student at uh, St. Cloud, we ran an experiment, a little bit different game than what we have here, where we had, uh, male leaders or female leaders, they all they have to do is send a signal to their followers. It's a simple invest or not invest. It's a costly signal, so if the leader is invested, they're uh, basically uh, on the hook uh, for uh, having to follow through with that. And what we found is that the followers didn't care about the gender of the leader, uh, but the leader cared about their lead gender being revealed. So men just uh, were all over the place. They were not very good leaders, and uh, they, but they were pretty similar to women as followers. But women, if they were playing with all other women, and they know they were playing with all other women, they were much more willing to take the risk of investing, um, knowing that they had females as their followers. They were also very similar uh, results if the women were leading and the followers didn't know their gender. But if the followers knew that it was a leader who was, uh, the, the female was the leader, then the female pulled back from sending that invest signal, which was beneficial for the group. So here it was more that in the, it was in the leader's mind, my followers, if there are any uh, males in that group, or if they know my gender, uh, I'm not gonna trust them. So they pulled back. If it was all females and their gender was not revealed, they were much more willing to lead. Um, all right. So you got perceptions. Another might be reason for uh, the differences we've observed is preferences. It may be that women just don't want to be leaders. And two reasons for this might be uh, that uh, leadership requires <coughs> leaders to compete. Uh, they have to compete for that role. So there's tournaments, uh, essentially, that they're playing in. And evidence suggests that women, on relative to men, are less competitive. Right? Uh, there's a lot of studies here, and I think uh, one could maybe criticize these, but the evidence suggests women tend to be less competitive than men. Right? Uh, likewise, there, to be a leader requires taking risk. And the evidence uh, suggests that women tend to be more risk averse than men. So it may be knowing that I have to compete, knowing that I have to be a risk taker, these are things I don't like doing, I don't want to be a leader. So I'm going to hold back from uh, trying to attain that kind of role. Right. All right, well, we want to sort of sort out what's going on here. And our focus in the experiment is on perceptions. So what we're interested in is the differential impact of a leader's gender on his or her followers. Right? Now to do that, we need to remove uh, certain factors from the equation. And in particular, we want to take out risk-taking, competitiveness, the ability, so uh, the differences in ability of our various leaders. Uh, and to do this, we have our leaders randomly selected. So we don't have to worry about males maybe more willing, uh, are more willing to opt into leadership roles than females because they're more risk-taking or competitive. 
We don't have to worry about the only people who become the leaders are the ones who uh, believe they have the abilities. Men tend to be more overconfident than women and therefore may opt for the leadership role more. So we try to take those factors out. Um, we also take care of factors that differentiate our leaders from their followers. So our leaders are just ordinary players. Um, they have no special information, as you'll see in a little bit. Uh, all of the information that the leaders relay to our followers is available to the followers to begin with. Um, when we go through the instructions of the game, everything is laid out. Uh, all the leaders does, all the leaders do in our experiment is come in and basically say the same thing over again. Uh, I'll show you that in a moment. We also have the situation where our leaders' interests are perfectly aligned with our followers. All right, so if the followers do better, the leaders do better. If the followers do worse, the leaders do worse. So leaders have uh, an interest in making sure their followers do as well as possible. All right, so our focus here is on the gender-based perception of the leaders and what role these perceptions play in determining the leader's effectiveness, and their compensation. All right, so we're going to ultimately test three hypotheses. Um, the first is um, you know, the null hypothesis is that followers do not differentiate between the advice of male and female leaders. The second is followers do not differentiate between male and female leaders when allocating credit to their leaders for any group success. And the third, they followers do not differentiate between male and female leaders when rewarding their leaders for their group success. So in our experiment, followers get to uh, set a bonus for their leader. Um, I'll explain that in a moment. All right. All right, so the basic experiment design now. Um, I know some of you are econ, but many of you may not be econ, may not be familiar with the game, so I'll, I'll try and explain the game a little bit. Uh, what we're playing is a modification of a game that uh, Weber and co-authors uh, used in an earlier paper. It's what's called the weakest link coordination game. So um, and I, it, it'd be easier to explain the game in, in just a moment when we, uh, in a later slide where I can show you the payoffs and how the payoffs are determined. So it, the, the essential game is everyone in the group wants to coordinate their actions. And uh, if anyone deviates from that, the person who deviates uh, the furthest from the, uh, the optimal determines the payoff for everyone else. Right. Uh, I'll give you a little bit more detail in a moment. Right. So the, the basic outline of the experiment is our subjects play 10 periods with no leader. We then introduce a leader, and then they play 10 more periods. Right. We recruit subjects in multiples of five plus one. Um, our group size is five. In a coordination game, um, been lots of work done on coordination games. If you have like a two-person group, coordination is uh, highly likely and quite stable over time. As you increase the size, coordination becomes more difficult and over time it tends to collapse more quickly. With a group size of five, um, I've done some work with a, uh, another fellow in Monash where we were looking at group size um, and we found that around five, it gets, you know, it's possible to coordinate, but it can be difficult and it tends to collapse um, over time. So we wanted something where uh, if two is too small, the leader's gonna have no effect because they're already coordinating. Much larger than five, coordination is extremely difficult. The leader's not likely to have any effect. Five seemed to be a nice number where, you know, they can coordinate, likely to fall apart, so a leader could have a positive effect there. Um, all right. So we're playing in groups of five. Um, now, uh, the extra one that's recruited in each session serves as the se session leader. Right. 
So uh, the leader is the leader of multiple groups. Uh, we had anywhere from 15 to 25 subjects playing the game plus one leader. So they might be making their spiel to a group of three, or three groups of five, or as many as five groups of five. The sessions were predetermined as either a male or female leader uh, session. So uh, this was just done, you know, the, the grad students who were running it would just say, all right, today we're gonna have female session and they would then proceed accordingly. Um, and was that randomly determined ahead of time? How it there was a random, you know, yeah. we, there, there wasn't like we did all male and then all female, it was sort of mixed up. Um, all right. To control our leaders uh, a bit, we used a third person of the chosen gender who signed in for the experiment. All right. uh, we also um, restricted it the person that being Caucasian we didn't want to introduce another uh, factor that could uh, affect the evaluation of the leader. So it had to be the third male or the third female entering or signing in, and they had to be Caucasian. Um, what, what if you didn't get three males? Well, uh, they you know, we recruited uh, a random sample of males and females, and most every session had quite a variety. Um, so, what uh, uh, the way the, uh, the, the experiment was conducted at Texas A&M, they have a large lab room and then outside of that they have a room where people come to a window and sign in. So when they signed in, uh, if they were the third person, they were just told discreetly, please hang back when everyone goes into the lab. Um, so when we took people in the lab, we pulled that person aside uh, and they stayed outside. In the lab, when they went in, the, the remaining subjects went in, they played 10 periods of the game with no leader. Right, so that in the lab, they have individual workstations with uh, uh, barriers between each other. Um, they were randomly assigned to groups of five, so you know you're playing with four other people in the room, but you don't know which four. Uh, the instructions were provided on a monitor, such as this at the front of the room. Uh, and they were read aloud, so everyone could follow along. They played 10 periods of the coordination game with these fixed groups, and they got feedback after every period. Okay. So there's another question. So groups of five, so was there a leader for each group of five? No, nope. one leader for whole, each session. session. Yep. And the number of groups in each session was the same? It was either between three and five. Um, yeah. All right, so the coordination game, the way it's set up is what you have to do as a member of the group is choose your player feet. And it's either zero, one, two, or three. Right? Now, if everyone coordinates and say everyone picks zero, then the group receives a reward and the per member reward is a dollar. So they get a reward of a dollar, their fee is zero, their net earnings for that period is their reward, less their fee. Right. So if everyone coordinated on uh, uh, zero, excuse me, if everyone coordinated on zero, they earned a dollar, uh, and uh, they're paid a dollar, and less their fee, so they earn a dollar. If they all coordinate on a dollar, um, they get a reward of 250, and less their fee, they all earn a dollar fifty, and likewise if they all coordinate on two and three. Right. So if everyone chooses three dollars, they get a reward of five. They have the maximum earnings of two dollars. Right. Now the trouble is, it's a weakest link game. So if four people choose three and one person chooses zero. It's the person who chose the least, the smallest personal fee that determines the payoff for everyone else. They're the weakest link. Everyone gets a group member reward of a dollar, but they have a personal fee. Those four have a personal fee of $3, so they end up with minus.
minus two. The person who chose a dollar uh, uh, chose zero ends up with a dollar. So you want to coordinate, you know, ideally coordinating on three, but if you can't do that, two, one, or zero. So any questions about the game? Fairly straightforward. The payoff maker is always the same? Yes. And they get the results after every round? Or they get the res results after every round. And, you know, they have uh, all this information that, you know, you and there may, I've got to go back and remember, but there may even have been examples. Um, but they know if they want to earn the most, they should all choose three. They don't all choose three, then those who choose three are going to uh, get very small payoffs. Um, those who choose a smaller amount are going to get at least a positive payoff. Um, Where's the source of deviation from the three dollar choice then? Uh, the risk that, you know, you being uh, risk averse and afraid that other people aren't going to choose three too. How often do you observe outcomes other than three? What, what Show you in a moment. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so do they just observe the group outcome or do they observe the individual choices within the group? They observe what their earnings are, which mm. from the, you know, they have this information. So if I chose three and I lost $2, I know there's at least one other person in my group. But you don't know which one. Zero. But you don't know which one. I don't know which okay. one. Yeah, it's all anonymous. All you know is that there was one person, at least one person, who deviated from three and chose zero. Okay. okay. Alright. So, um, while this is going on, the leader's been taken into a separate room uh, that's uh, connected to the lab. The leader's been given the instructions, same instructions we give the followers, asked to please read through this. If you have any questions, there's a proctor there that answers the questions for the leader. They're told that they're going to give a short, short message to the other subjects about how to play the game to maximize earnings. And you know, to make it uh, so that uh, we have some control over what they say, we give them a list of talking points. And we ask them, don't just read the talking points, you know, put them in your own words. Add your own little flair to it. Um, the talking points, again, are fairly straightforward. We need to coordinate on a fee of $3. If everyone picks three, we earn twice as much as if you all pick zero. If you pick three, the reward is five, and each person earns two bucks. If you pick zero, you only earn a dollar. Everyone should pick three. If you pick less, everyone learns less, including you. So nothing more than what the followers already know. Very simple information. And how, and how does the leader get paid? Uh, I'll tell you in a moment. So <laughs> <laughs> jumping jump in the gun. Jump in the gun. All right. So first ten periods are played. The next ten periods, uh, the beginning of it, uh, mm -hmm. the uh, leader comes into the room. The followers are told that one participant has been selected at random to be the session leader. The leader is not a current member of any group and has not made any personal fee decisions. So, you know, if you've been totally uh, messed over by someone in your group, you know that your leader is not, you know, was certainly not that person. Right? Um, uh, so there's no animosity uh, towards the leader, or should be none. Uh, the leader, uh, they're told that the leader has received a handout with those. We didn't call them necessarily talking points for the followers, but a handout that outlines techniques for maximizing their earnings. Um, and the, as far as your question, the leader earns 120% uh, of average earnings for each round plus a dollar. We wanted the leader to be the highest earning person in the room. All right, so the leader comes into the room up at the front where the, the screen was. Uh, there's a little podium. The leader gives their spiel. You know, it might take a minute or two. 
then the leader sits down, the leader's finished. That's one time uh, uh, speech to the followers, and that's it. The groups are reformed, so we don't have that uh, history, and then uh, history from the first 10 periods, and then they play for 10 more periods right, with new fixed groups and feedback after every round. All right. Now, at the end of the 20th period, the leader's bonus is determined. So the followers uh, select a bonus. It's at a cost to themselves. So they have to pay out of their earnings, depending on what level of bonus they wish to provide their leaders. And the leader receives the bonus equal to the sum of the bonuses selected by the chosen group. So we, we pick one of the three or the five groups at random and implement the bonus that they choose. So this was conducted at Texas A&M. Uh, we had four sessions of male leaders, four female leaders. All told, there were 175 non-leaders, uh, almost evenly split between male and female leader sessions. Um, it took about an hour to an hour and a half. And the earnings, $24 for an hour, an hour and a half is not bad, and then the leader Obviously received their bonus uh, extra earnings. All right. As far as characteristics, differences in the followers or the non-leaders between the male and female uh, leader sessions. So uh, we don't find any significant difference here. So uh, that's nice. Uh, I guess these are random recruited uh, subjects. And okay, again, periods one through 10, leaders have not been introduced. Uh, followers' behavior as such should not significantly differ by treatment. Uh, we don't find that it does. You know, the frequency of zeros and threes, 50% zeros, three, uh, 20%, $3, this is over the total over the 10 periods. Average earnings are fairly similar, 66 in the male leader session, 60 cents in the female leader, and we don't find any evidence of significant, of difference between there. And this is sort of the breakdown of your question about the number of threes. Um, the threes are the greens up here, not very many. Uh, if you look at the sort of coordination over time, in this, it started off with about 50% of the people choosing threes in the first period, and then it just declined uh, dramatically over that, uh, over the 10 period. Um, and there are some little differences, but again, nothing is significant. We did some regression analysis, and is that, is that is that typically the result for these games that, that the cooperation breaks down right after the first round? Or yeah, in, in, in a group of five, that's not uncommon. In a group of two, it can be much more stable. Uh, groups uh, larger than five, it may never even get off the floor. So in past studies that are running this game, that's that's the result? That yeah, I don't think there's know. anything odd about our okay. first 10 periods. All right, so we don't find any effect of the male leader in the first 10 period, or any effect in the first 10 periods. There has been no leader yet, and this is what we would have expected. All right. At the end of the 10 periods, again, the groups are reformed. The leader gives uh, his or her scripted speech, and they play for 10 more periods. All right. So we'll go through each of the hypotheses that we stated in uh, turn. One thing, um, our hypotheses, the alternative hypotheses, are one-sided, but for... You know, to be conservative, we used a two-tailed test in all of our tests. So um, our results are probably less strong than they ought to be. We you know, could have easily uh, justified a one-tailed test and reported stronger results. All right. Um, first one, followers do not differentiate between the advice of male and female leaders. Here we couldn't reject the no. Um, the evidence is that the followers treat the advice from male and female leaders pretty much the same. Um, and 
here is the second 20 period or 10 periods. Again, these are fairly similar. There's a little bit more uh, threes in the male leader sessions than in the female. Um, and that was sort of consistent with the first 10 periods. But again, when we do the regression analysis, we don't find any significant uh, explanatory power of the uh, type of leader, the gender of the leader. Right. Is there anything you do in these as uh, linear regressions rather than like word focus or whatever? Uh, the results are fairly similar across all of them. So nothing much here. Um, you know, what you do, we do find is if you had higher earnings in the previous period, you know, maybe if people coordinate, you're more likely to be willing to coordinate. There's that downward pressure over time uh, that you see. What, and if you look at the, I don't have the charts here, but you see in the first 10 periods started at about 50% and plunged towards zero fairly quickly. There's a Restart effect, which is not uncommon in a lot of these experiments, we seem to have a restart, you know, usually with a restart effect, when you stop, sort of regroup, and then uh, start again, you usually get a jump back towards the original uh, level of coordination. We got a restart effect on steroids. Uh, ours, you got to jump almost to 100% coordination. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the leader was having a very strong effect there. And you do see, again, the, the erosion over time, but much slower uh, and not much difference between men and women, uh, male and female leader sessions. Right. All right. So the second thing was, you know, do the followers differentiate between male and female leaders when crediting their leaders with group success? Right. So all the groups had uh, pretty good success with average earnings per round uh, jumped quite considerably. So we asked them at the end of the session, uh, preformed questions, what impact do you believe the leader had on your earnings? Right. Now, we had these evaluated by two graduate students, native English speakers, who were in no way related to the, the project, knew nothing about the project. Um, before giving them the, the subject's uh, evaluation, we removed all gender-specific pronouns. So it was instead of she, it was the leader, um, that type of thing. Uh, and they rated the responses from minus five to plus five, with minus five being, hey, this is a very negative evaluation of the leader to plus five being a very positive. Um, the two people doing this did a fairly good job. The, Correlation coefficient of the, the ratings is 0.87. The Cohen's kappa is 0.26, a little below what we would have liked. But uh, uh, and what we did was take the average of the two ratings and call that our variable impact. So this is uh, the student's assessment of the impact of the leader on their earnings. And these are verbatim. Uh, comments that were made, uh, I just did a random sample, uh, 10 out of the 85 from female leader sessions, and so something like here, this would just be the leader instead of she. What, what school was this conducted at? <laughs> 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 so you yeah, I always make sure to say these are verbatim. Um, uh, yes, uh, well, I, I don't think it would matter what school because they're writing them, you know, they're typing them real quick. They're not editing them, they're just throwing it out there, uh, uh, trying to get their ideas down, not worrying about it spelling at all. Um, so, yeah. That is an interesting idea, though, because, I mean, there's, there's a certain culture around Texas A&M, and they've had debates recently about women as yell leaders and, or cheer, you know, the, mm -hmm. in the cheer squad. And I wonder, if the experiment was repeated at uh, a school that doesn't quite have that same institutional history, if, if the results are comparable. It would, it would be worthwhile, yeah. It, it does, Texas A&M does have a bit of a culture. Uh, they've got their uh, decor, I think they call it. Yeah. Uh, um, so that, that could be uh, an issue. Um, all right, 
And this is the random sample again, verbatim for evaluation of male leaders. One, uh, play, I presented this up at uh, Fairbanks uh, a week ago, and one student asked, um, did you do any evaluation of the language used? I know there's been one of those one uh, econ rumors website, someone did an evaluation of male and females, uh, postings about male and females there, found a distressing uh, differences in the language used. I don't think there's any, you know, in, I've, I've looked through these, I don't think there's anything that would jump out like you might see. This is not as anonymous as you know, the econ rumors would be. So, you know, people might have said that, you know, the leader did an awful job, but they didn't use any, let's say, crude language. Um, I don't remember any crude language. Um, all right. As far as the distribution, you can see that the male leader evaluations tend to be heavily skewed uh, to the high end. The women also, but uh, less so to the high end. Um, and the mean for men, just about one unit higher than it is for women. So, you know, before we go much further with that, you know, we need to recognize that there could be alternative explanations for these evaluations uh, rather than just gender. Uh, it may be that leaders differ on attributes that define a good leader. Uh, and it could also be that they, uh, our male leaders were more attractive than the female leaders. Uh, uh, there are studies that show that attractive individuals uh, earn more in the marketplace, in experiments, uh, in dictator games. Uh, dictator game, one person just divides up a pool of money between themselves and the other person. Uh, people are more generous uh, to a, an attractive person in the dictator game. Public good games, similar type of behavior. Ultimatum games, also, and then trust games. People are more trusting of more attractive individuals. And uh, not a wise thing to do is, uh, at least according to Wilson and Echo, they find that the attractive people don't reward that with trust. Um, so uh, be careful. Uh, the attributes of what constitutes a good leader that we looked at was based on a, a paper we came across by Isaac Privy. Uh, so we looked, evaluated them on effective communication, honesty, competence, competence, ability to inspire, and positive attitude. Um, we, they were rated from one low to five high, and we used the same scale for attractiveness. So we asked them to rate the attractiveness from uh, one non-attractive, or low attractiveness to five high. We didn't. Yep. Was there any discussion? I noticed you've never said anything about the age of the participants or the leaders. UAA has so many adults, if you will, right. um, not just college kids. Texas A&M, I would imagine, has more college-age kids that mm -hmm. are all about the same age. If that experiment were done here, you might I get something it would different. Be very different. Yeah. Uh, our, our, you know, these are uh, just the followers, but the, the leaders, you know, were randomly chosen, so I don't think the, uh, I don't think there was a big difference in the age of the male and the female leaders. They were all in their early 20s, approximately. College age. Um, so, uh, there, I don't think there was anything different there. Um, Thank you. Okay. Um, where were we? All right, so, when we evaluated this, um, we don't find any significant difference except the men were rated as a bit more honest and uh, a bit more competent, uh, just borderline here. But you do see, um, just looking at the five categories, every one of these, the uh, males, there are more of the males rated a five than the females. Extent. Um, but again, there's only four males and four females that are being evaluated, right? right. So even, so even though there's a difference in honesty and competence, 
competency, it may have nothing to do with gender. It could just be that these, these particularly highly competent people happen to be males right. because they're the only truly. Yes. yes. Yep. All right. So rather than putting all of these factors in our analysis, since they were likely to be highly correlated, we um, did some uh, factor analysis to see if these all sort of loaded on us uh, the same factor, or if there were more than one factor. And what we found is that all six of our attributes, we kept attracting them separate, uh, but all six of those leadership uh, attributes loaded together on the same factor. Uh, they had an eigenvalue of uh, greater than greater than three, and usually the, uh, uh, the cutoff is like one, so uh, and there were no other factors with an eigenvalue above one. Uh, so we were pretty confident these were all highly correlated with one another, uh, and they were common to a single factor. So we call the, this uh, uh, factor analysis uh, uh, index we did our leadership quality index. We use that in our analysis going forward. And what we see is um, if we're regressing on impact, male leader is significant, not shockingly, leadership quality index is also significant. Um, but male leaders still remain. So we do find a bias toward men in the evaluation of the leaders' effectiveness, uh, their impact, even though they were, there was no significant difference in their effectiveness. Right. All right, after this, we then also had the bonus. Uh, so they vote on the bonus, and again, it's costly. Did, and did we'll, they know, when they're thinking about this, did they know what the leader's base pay was gonna be? They, they were told that the leader would get the dollar twenty, one hundred and twenty percent yeah. plus a dollar, mm -hmm. plus whatever else they take in. Right. Yeah. And so, why did you take out attractiveness for last? Oh, we we had control for attractiveness, but we didn't include that in that factor analysis. So we we just used the leadership attributes uh, for the factor analysis, and then we also controlled for the, the index we get there and attractiveness. All right, so the third hypothesis is they do not differentiate between male and female leaders when rewarding their leaders for the group's success or you know, voting on a bonus. We do find for a full sample uh, a difference here. Again, not significant with a two-tailed test. It would be about six or so percent with a one-tailed test. Uh, but we can see there's a bit more of a mass for males in the positive bonus range. Um, about a third of our sample voted for no bonus, and that kind of uh, troubled us because, <laughs> well, you know, dudes, why would they? <laughs> well, it, it was part of it, you know, why would they? We, we, we really wanted, you know, we were hoping they'd give a bonus, but when we sort of sat down and thought about it, and said, well, they didn't pay pretty damn well, why wouldn't you give them a bonus? Um, so th it seemed to me there was a number of reasons why they might not give a bonus. One, they're already sufficiently compensated, so I don't care what their gender is. I don't really see any reason to give them any more. The second, maybe they didn't believe they did enough to warrant a bonus. And the third is, I'm just not willing, you know, they may have deserved a bonus, and I may think they should get one, but I'm not gonna pay for it. Um, <laughs> And we can't determine which of these reasons uh, was their reason for choosing zero. So to take that ambiguity out, we restrict our sample to those who vote for a positive bonus, and that reduces us to 118 observations. And now we find that the difference is significant, 5% level, uh, and the males are receiving about 1.5% higher bonus on average. Yep. Is there a difference in who's voluntary to give a bonus? Like between males and females are, is one more prone to give bonus or less prone to give bonus? No, they're, they're very similar. You can oh, see sorry. that the, um, these are males, females. So females, if anything, were a little less likely to give the bonus, but only just uh, slightly. Um, but, but this lets you receive the bonus, not yeah. it gives the bonus. 
No, no, this is who's giving the bonus. Um, this is the percent of male leader followers um. who voted for the zero bonus. So out of the uh, like 90 uh, male fo uh, followers in the male session, approximately a third of them said, I'm not giving a bonus. But, but, so, but some of the people in that, in that brown bar with a zero on the far left, that, yeah. that one third, that's money going to a male leader from both males and female followers. No, this is male and female followers. Uh, Correct. Uh, a third of the total number of followers said, no, I'm not going to give to a male leader. Give yeah. to a male leader. I, th I thought his question was the opposite, yeah. oh. which is. So it's it's who, who's giving bonus basically to anybody. So it looks like from what I see there, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, So you want to know if. Uh, like, like so what I'm asking you, like, do, do male give, do, or males more likely to give to males, males more likely to give to females, females more likely to give to males, yeah. females more likely to give to females. The givers, we, not the receivers. Yeah. Um, like, are people more likely to reward people who are like them, different than them, right. or does I, it not matter? I, we didn't delve into that because we don't have that big of a sample, and I think that's cutting things a little bit on the fine side. Okay. And especially if we get to, you know, looking at just this group, the ones who give a positive bonus, we're then down to only 20-something uh, observations yeah, yeah. in each of those categories yeah. on average. So um, we weren't, we didn't feel it would be too reliable. Yeah. Um, so we didn't go down that road. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, again, once we restrict our sample, we get uh, a man, male leaders receiving about a 1.5% uh, higher bonus than uh, female leaders. And when we do some uh, analysis, you know, for all the samples, you can see uh, the bonus is around 1% of, uh, for that, which the average bonus was around 6. So you're talking about a 16% bump in earnings relative to the female leaders, and even a little bit higher over here. that consistent premium being paid to male leaders. All right, so just to conclude a little uh, with a sort of a summary and all, we, our leaders were randomly selected. They had no information advantage. Their interests are perfectly aligned with those of the followers, and they provide a scripted guidance. So they didn't, you know, go off on their own too greatly. Um, we've removed the issues of competitiveness and risk attitudes. Um, so we don't have to worry about those issues. Uh, we control for the content of the message by using that script, uh, those talking points, and the differences and physical and leadership attributes are controlled for uh, best we can. Is on, the, on the control, I don't know, so you controlled the content. I guess you gave them the, the talking points but not a script. Yeah. Um, is, did you record those messages and try to do any content? I, I don't know how you do a content analysis with just, with just form. Form. Yeah. A form, form. No, we didn't record but that. That would have been uh, maybe a nice thing to do. What other, someone else suggested is we use an actor, uh, two actors, uh, have a you know it's a, the same person come in uh, and do um, and, and sort of train the actors to do it, but that was something we just didn't, you know we didn't think of until later on. People suggested it. Um, uh, yep. So after controlling for all these potential channels, what's left on the table? Um, is this really just a straight gender bias effect, or are there other mechanisms that? that you're thinking that are going to explain the, the discrepancy? We can't think, you know, we're, we're saying it's gender bias. Um, I haven't had anybody suggest alternative explanations. Um, no, if, if you buy that uh, our leaders are given essentially the same message, um, <laughs> that, and that, and with that we're controlling for any perceptions about differences in attributes and uh, physical attractiveness, then I don't know what else 
you would say to them because um, we think we pulled out everything we can. Um, I'm sure, ultimately, we will hear from a referee saying, no, you haven't, <laughs> but <laughs> we'll, wait. Well, we'll wait for that. Yeah, I think you could maybe combat that by anchoring you know, inherent gender bias in some type of psychological or evolutionary type of um, literature, mm -hmm. um, rather than just leaving it as gender bias. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So we have, you know, male leaders are not more effective. <coughs> um, we find, you know, only minor differences in male and leader, male and female leaders attributes or attractiveness, um, but still those followers rated male leaders significantly higher than the female leaders, and the male leaders received a bonus premium of between 1 and 1 1.6 percentage points, and that works out to about a 16% bump in pay. Um, uh, just to sort of tie this with some of the other uh, things that are out there, you know, there's all this research that's been done in polit political science that has documented the ways in which uh, female candidates are discouraged from uh, uh, entering uh, political races. Um, you know, if, and our results would sort of uh, tie to that in the sense that if you're a potential candidate and you feel you're going to be evaluated much uh, more negatively uh, than an equal uh, male candidate, that might discourage you from um, so, you know, these differences in perceptions can discourage women from seeking leadership positions. Um, our results also suggest something of explanation for the gender gap in earnings at the top. Uh, it may be that uh, you've got male and female leaders who are doing equally well, but the females are being rewarded smaller bonuses. Uh, because they're perceived to be less effective, even though they're equally effective. Um, this also relates some to the uh, couple of recent studies. One, uh, this is one of these sending out resumes with different names on it, uh, in this case male and female names, and what they found is that um, uh, when searching for a lab manager position, uh, female graduate students were at a significant disadvantage than male graduate students, even though they had the same resumes. Um, and then there's another study that's uh, come out recently that showed that uh, uh, when it come time for tenure, women receive less credit for co-authored papers than their male co-authors. Um, and then last, um, the idea that uh, uh, our results sort of suggest that even if women are equally competitive, equally uh, as risk-loving as men, they may find it difficult to attain those leadership positions uh, because of this perception uh, issue. Okay. Thank you. Nothing zero one. You know, pretty much everything we did is what I've reported here. So I don't know that there's anything else we could go after. Yeah, you could. You could also look on the on the premium or the bonus side. If you looked at the conditional on on getting something mm -hmm. with the bonus, you could also look at the likelihood of a particular gender getting a bonus in the first place. The binary. That you know, since a third of both, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 we did look at that, and it wasn't anything, uh, no significant difference. It wasn't like men were more likely to get a bonus than women. Um, yeah, it's just you know they were they were no pretty much equally likely to get the bonus, but once they got the bonus, it was the men got the 
larger bonus. So, so one thing that um, I'm curious about, I know we probably haven't collected it, but they were making statements about how people got people to stop doing the minimum fee, right? And so my main question is, did they get it through by like encouraging them, appealing to greed, rebuking the living daylights out of them, shaming them, like why? There, there are statements in there that it wasn't like completely, you know, well, you know, well scripted. They did have some freedom to encourage more giving, as though like did appeal to greed or shame or like like what techniques and did people different people try different techniques generally male versus female to get away from that minimum contribution. That's one of the things why we gave them those talking points to yeah. try and minimize that as but much as possible. To to answer your question, I would have had to report. Yeah. The things and we didn't do that. But you can't really measure to what extent it was minimized unless you actually measure it. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. I, I can't, you know, we, we think that by giving them a script, we reduce the variation that we would get if we just had, had to go in there, you know, and try and tell these people to. Pick but it three. was in their own words, though. Put this it in was, your own words so that then you've gone off script. Yeah. They, they do, you know, they do put yeah. it in their own words. We didn't want them just reading it, um, and that's where having like an actor, yeah. we could write out the script and have them give that, and then make sure that both parties got the same script. Um, yep. Phil, for some of your kind of marginal significance uh, on some of your hypotheses, did you try uh, just doing randomization inference? Um, to see, like, and look at the placebo effects that you would get if you just randomly assigned pe uh, people to uh, male or female leaders no, and compare it against that? Because that might, that might be, if there's good evidence by doing randomization inference, that might be enough to kind of push you into the, the nice area of saying, well, you know, our p-value here might be a little bit uh, larger because of our small sample size, but when we look at all these placebo effects, it's actually indicating that it's very significant. So it just might be another piece of evidence that you could use to, okay. if it works in your favor anyways. Right. To, I can look into that. Are, are yeah. you suggesting bias? <laughs> no, I'm saying <laughs> bring <laughs> more, sure, I'm, sure. I'm just saying there's more evidence to be brought to the table about whether your results are significant or not. Yeah, but that, but that, that caveat should hold whether or not it supports or refutes his argument, right? No, I'm <laughs> saying it would work favorably <laughs> for you. If it's not going to work as favorably if you have a bunch of null results. Yeah, to go back to my in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> Randomization inference. It's just okay. it's it's a it's it's a old literature that goes back to Fisher. That's just like because under the null hypothesis that there's no effect of male or female, you can just randomly assign the, the treatment of male female across the, the the different observations, and you should, if the null hypothesis holds, get no effect. Mm -hmm. And so you can you basically get a distribution of kind of placebo effects, and that's kind of your your so-called reference distribution that you can then compare your result to relative to all the placebo effects. Okay, I'll look into that. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you all very much. Thanks, Phil. Thank you.